Hey there, tomato heads. Lauren here, Mrs. Tomato Head. Welcome to Lauren's Tomato Awesome Sauce. Started this show three weeks ago. This is episode three. Um, it may seem like more because it was kind of coming off of the heels of me doing a 2024 grow list um, live and bringing sometimes two, three hour episodes of like only showcasing 16 varieties. So we realize, and I love to come to you live because I love the interaction with all my fellow tomato heads. Um, so after I kind of decided to like pull the plug after six episodes, um, we kind of decided like, hey, maybe there's something we can talk about every week. So I've committed to come to you every Thursday and try to focus, try to, being the operative term here, try to focus my... Um, not efforts, but my focus on only 10 varieties, which is tough for somebody that could just talk about tomatoes like this for hours and do all the time. Um, let's say some hi, hi to uh, some of our live viewers. I love to connect with all of you. Please feel free to comment. Let me know what's going on with you in your tomato world right now. How are your seedlings going? And then I try to get as many comments on the screen as possible. Hi, Ro. Glad you're here. Welcome. Hi, Nicole. Glad you're here. My buddy Luke's here. Hi, Luke from Belgium. Tara Dove. Hello. Hello, our fellow tomato heads. Hi, Deb. I always think of you with, with rare varieties, Deb, and I think I've got some cool ones to show you today, if you don't know about them already. Um, hi, Sathia. Glad you're here. I like those little hands waving here. Um, Ramonte is here from Lithuania. Hello, my friend. I actually didn't, I actually should have reached out to you a couple times today because I was unsure about a few things. But the reason why I'm late is because, as usual, see, my obsessions with tomatoes are very fluid, which means like what I'm obsessed with at this moment could change drastically in like five minutes. I commiserate with Kina on this. Kina, I don't know if you're watching, but she and I are so cut from the same cloth when it comes to tomatoes that we like. And like just the past couple of days, it's been like this mind explosion of new breeders that we've just come to learn about, new vendors, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, um, from all over the world, specifically Ukraine is one, actually a few I'm going to talk about today. So Keen and I were talking about how like our 2024 grow list, things we've already started, we're bored of. <laughs> Not all of them, of course, but like some of them I'm going to be like giving them away because I'm kind of bored. I want to make room for the, the new seeds that keep finding their way popping into soil. And I've noticed many of you in the group um, are saying that too, that seeds just somehow fall into soil. Um, speaking of groups, I didn't mention the group. If it's your first time watching, welcome. Besides being Mrs. Tomato Head on YouTube, I run a group called Tomato Lovers Collective and Swap on Facebook. It's more a community um, than a group. I don't know why. Group's not a bad term. I just feel like we're so much more than a Facebook group. We're really a, um, a collective, if you will, of everything, you know, kind of an one-stop shopping, even though we don't sell anything for the tomato lover. If you're a beginner tomato lover, or you've been growing for 30 years like me, there's something for everybody. We educate, we donate, we gift our seeds, we learn, we um, share our obsessions. Speaking of which, let me share you my shirt today. I keep getting these new tomato shirts. My tomato shirts accidentally fall into my Amazon cart and then miraculously come into my mailbox. I don't know how that happens. This one says, today's good mood is sponsored by tomatoes. Got this one from Amazon. So, so true. Even when I'm in, you know, like many of you know, I live with chronic pain and illness. I, I have lupus and fibromyalgia. Have for, you know, 23 years. It's nothing new. But, um, you know, even with like the physical pain and often the emotional pain that goes with it, um, if I can immerse myself in either, you know, sharing seeds with somebody doing a swap, if I could be out in my garden this week, we had, I mean, I'm in New Jersey, um, Western New Jersey, 6B, very close to the Pennsylvania border, um, like by Easton, Pennsylvania. We're not far from there. Um, we had 80 degree Fahrenheit weather three days this week and sunny. 
which was a gift. So I brought some of my tomato seedlings out just for a little taste of the sun. You can't do it a lot because you really need to um, harden them off. But I, I know they just like, they're like, give me the sun, give me the sun. You know, they, I have good grow lights, but they, you know, doesn't take the place of the sun. So anyway, I was be, I was able to be out there um, three days or not all three days two really two and a half days. And I, cleaned up the yard that should have been cleaned up in the fall. And I up potted some things. I added soil. I did a brief video on my YouTube channel, which is Mrs. Tomato Head, by the way. If you don't subscribe, I would appreciate if you do. Um, but I did a like a four minute video last weekend of just adding soil to my seedlings. Um, I actually don't have any handy here. But if you watch that, it's I start my seedlings. I start with soil down halfway in the cup plant my two seeds. And as the seedlings grow, hopefully there's two, but sometimes there's one, um, continuously adding soil right up to the top. And that develops strong, healthy roots along the stem. Um, the fuzzy things, for those of you that don't know, the fuzzy things that are along tomato stems are roots that are saying, they're screaming to get me in soil, bury me. So um, if you do that, you will have the healthiest tomato seedlings. Good soil really helps too. So once they outgrow that, then I separate them and then put them in my next step. If they outgrow grow those cups, they go into these nine inch seedling grow bags that I love. Um, but I started three weeks, we started three weeks later this year to try to avoid that as much as possible because it takes up a lot of soil. And as much as over the years, I tried starting early thinking I'm going to get earlier tomatoes, it doesn't always even usually work out that way because they'll get so big um, they'll become stressed even in the biggest grow bag. So I did hold, I'm holding about 10 back to do what I now refer to as my garage tomatoes. So I'm going to take some that I started a bit earlier. They're already big and in those nine inch seedling grow bags. I'm going to put those in 10 gallon grow bags and I drag them out during the day and I'll drag them in at night. That hasn't happened yet, but within the next few weeks, I'll start doing that. Those I can get some tomatoes a little bit earlier, but in general, Holding off three weeks is actually a gift. It really makes not much of a difference in your tomato um, yield. But I know we are all dying for fresh tomatoes right now. Um, Dee, you're on time. Hey, welcome. Glad you're here. Yvette tried not to fall asleep while I was waiting. Yes, I apologize for the wait. I um, had to get a couple more things in there, squeeze a couple more things. Oh, I start. Here's my Kina. Hey, Kina. Kina's a moderator of tomato lovers collective and swap with me along with Jen joy. Um, she and I have been talking like nonstop the past couple of days. Like, look at this one, look at this one. What can I bump off my grow list to put this one in? How quickly can I get these seeds from Ukraine? You know, it's like sh we share the same illness, Kina and I, we commiserate. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's fun. It's awfully fun. Just sharing this with all of you is so much fun. And I hope you guys have as much fun with it as I do. Um, I think you do. We've got 53 people here on a random Thursday. Well, I was going to say afternoon. It's Thursday afternoon here, but we've got members. I like this time because I was when I was doing my grow list series, I was noticing that people could tune in like Kina, who's from Norway, or Ramante, who's in um, Lithuania, or Luke, who's in Belgium. So I like that. I like that. Um, Sasha, hey, tomato peoples. Welcome. Thanks for being here, Sasha. If you're um, watching from in the Facebook group, on my screen, if this is your comment, you will come up as Facebook user. I use a platform called StreamYard. StreamYard allows me to broadcast in the group, on my YouTube channel, on Instagram, although I forgot to do it on Instagram today, um, and on my Facebook page, um, Mr. and Mrs. Tomato Head. So because TLC is a private group, they need your permission if they're going to use your name and profile photo. So what you need to do for that is go to streamyard.com backslash Facebook. You should only have to do it once and then you'll never have to do it again. Um, the reason why this could be important is at the end of every episode, I do some, I draw five names and I give away seeds. And if you're not signed in, if you come up as Facebook user on my end, that means you have not granted permission. So once you go to streamyard.com backslash Facebook, you will see a screen that looks like this. 
just press that blue button that says let StreamYard see your Facebook live comments and you should be good to go. If you don't want to do that, just watch on my YouTube channel. And I did copy the link, um, which I will put in the comments. Every other, plat every other platform, my YouTube channel and my Facebook page, those are public. You don't need to grant any permission at all. Um, so here is the public viewing link on my YouTube channel. Should be coming to you right now. If for some reason you can't see that, just go to Mr. And Mrs. Tomato Head YouTube channel and um, you will find me streaming there. But I've got, you know, got some good seeds to give away. Some from Heirloom Seed House, which reminds me a couple things before I get started on the tomatoes. Um, Evan Gregoire from Heirloom Seed House, I tend to mention him a lot because he's incredibly generous to our group. And I mentioned this last week. He is offering 30% off to TLC members with the code um, last chance sale. Let me get that somewhere. Let's see. I get so excited to talk about tomatoes. I'm like, doom, doom, squirrel, squirrel. I'm all over the place, but that's okay. I'm a hot mess who tries really hard. Um, here it is. Last chance sale is the coupon code. He's extended it until April 30th for us, which is incredibly generous. You can use that at, it's heirloomseedhouse.com or portlandseedhouse.com. Brings you to the same place. So thank you, Evan. And he's given us some seeds that I'll give away at the end of the episode or your choice. So the five names I draw, I give you a choice of things you can choose from. So thank you, Evan, um, for that 30% off. Um, I've got some 10% off coupons that I can give out after April also from him. So thank you, Evan, for your generosity. If you haven't caught, he's really um, well-versed in, in unique Italian varieties, as well as long keeper or winter storage tomatoes. If you haven't checked out my interview with him, it was from back in January, go to my YouTube channel, Mr. And Mrs. Tomato Head. It was a really good interview. If you want to know any, you know, about long keepers, we tend to talk about that a lot. Um, those varieties in um, Tomato Lovers Collective and Swap. Kina's mom, Kit, brought it to our attention back in September, and we were all, she's showing us these hanging tomatoes she's got in her kitchen, which she still has, by the way, she posted a picture like a week or so ago. And we're all like, how can I eat tomatoes in January? Sign me up. So that's when our seeking long, long keeper tomatoes, um, we were all seeking knowledge. So I interviewed Evan, great interview, same guy that's doing the 30% off. So thanks, Evan. Um, also, Farmer Val's Backyard um, on Etsy, she's having a sale right now for 30% off. And you can find her on Etsy. Did I not? Oh, yeah, here it goes. Farmer Val's Backyard on Etsy. She's got some really fantastic varieties. She's a friend. Um, she's got great customer service. You will love what she has to offer. So she's also until April 30th. Um, I think I have a direct link to her shop. Do I? Do I? Yes, I do. I can be really efficient sometimes. Sometimes not so much, but some cases I surprise myself. Okay, here's the direct link to her shop on Etsy. So if you like what she has to offer, and why wouldn't you, um, take her up on the 30% off. Let's get to some more comments. Thanks, Val, Satya. Um, oh, yeah, I started talking about prizes. You guys are way ahead of me. If you would like to be one of the names I draw at the end of the episode and make sure you're signed in if you're watching from the Facebook group. All you have to do is type in the comments sometime during this broadcast, hashtag tomato, and I have a giveaway tool that um, will draw your name, but it won't pick you up if you're not signed in. So um, Teresa begins here. Hello. He has a ton of knowledge. He sure does. He sure does. I was thinking of asking him to come back. What do you guys think? Um, Facebook user says, I up-potted my long keepers yesterday. Can't wait. Me too. I, I actually just started my long keepers. I don't know if that was a good or, by the way, if this is your comment, make sure you're signed in or watch on my YouTube channel because I'm not picking you up. Um, I wasn't sure what the best way to go about it was as far as when to sow the long keepers. I'm still having regular varieties falling into soil. So I figured since these are going to be, um, let me get this off. 
Oops. What did I do? So much for the efficiency. Um, I figured I would hold off on the long keepers, which I, so I just started within the past week, I've started three. I want to do so many more. I don't know about you guys, but I've, I've really developed like a really nice collection of some super rare long keepers. Um, had a member from Spain gift me regional long keepers that you can't even find information on, on the internet. Um, I think four different ones he gave me. And, you know, we talk about this in the group a lot, but I feel like it's my responsibility to save the tomatoes. You know, if you're associated with like the slow food arc, um, organization for biodiversity, which means like that's their organizations, there's other arc of food organizations, but they're organizations that are committed to um, saving regional varieties that are in danger of extinction, for lack of a better word. So when I find something that says rare, unique, some of, some of the long keepers I have, even from Italy, they say they're in danger of extinction. So it's like, I feel like the world's going to fall apart if I don't grow these varieties. Um, also, squirrel, I know I'm all over the place. If you guys didn't check in the group, um, uh, Licia Reed's daughter, Jessica, designed some really cool merch for us that says, save the tomato. It should be pinned to the top of the page, but there's shirts, there's stickers, water bottles, aprons, tote bags, um, and some other really cool merch too. We had talked about the the phrase save the tomatoes, I think during one of my grow out episodes, um, because I was talking about just this very thing, like if it's in danger of extinction, what's going to happen if I don't grow it? I don't know, but I don't want to find out. I need to plant them all. Cindy Stone's here. Love Val. Have lots of her stuff. Me too. Val's great. Um, Miss Alex M. I have never heard of the lawn keepers and I want to try to grow one this year. Well, Miss Alex M., um, if you're in the group and I think you are, um, check out our, there's a guides tab at the top. I'm doing this as if you guys can see up at the top of the group, um, check out the guides tab under guides. I have under resource sheets. I have a long keeper winter storage resource sheet that lists all the varieties that I'm aware of. And I keep adding to those constantly as well as some links to some YouTube stuff, some studies that I've found. So it's kind of like a all-encompassing breeder resource sheet, not breeder resource sheet, resource sheet on the, enti on the entire, um, what's the word you would look for, genre, I suppose, of long keeper, winter storage varieties. Um, I share vendors that have a lot. Heirloom Seed House is one. Meraki Seeds is another. Um, Tomato Eden has a whole bunch there's several, and I found some, um, you know, really small ones vendors lately that um, I'm finding some rare varieties from. So check it out, and you'll also find the link to my interview with Evan on there. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to grow them too. I've grown, I grew one last year without knowing it was a long keeper, and it's a dwarf. It's called Sacogno, um, and I kind of ate it under ripe. They had thick skin. I didn't realize they were long keepers. Had I realized that I would have, you know, saved them on the counter and let the flavors really develop, but that's okay. I've got lots of seeds and photos. So, um, have not interviewed Valerie Smith. That is a very good job. I mean, she and I talk over private message all the time. Um, she's a great person. She's also, um, an admin of the Baker Creek not the official Baker Creek group, but like Baker Creek Heirloom Seed Gardeners, I think. It's got like, I don't know, 70,000 members, maybe even more. So she's one of the admins of that. Um, I'm skipping some comments here and I don't want to do that. Oh, Sathya, I now have a permanent alarm on my phone for one o'clock Pacific Standard Time every Thursday. That makes me feel good. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. And Teresa, thank you. Like, subscribe, and notify. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Um, Facebook Uber, Uber, Uber user joining on Facebook instead of YouTube today. It's great, but as you can see, you're not signed in. So make sure you either sign in, doing the process I shared about a couple minutes ago, grant stream your permission, or go back to watching on YouTube. Um, you only have to do it once, and then you should never have to do it again. But 
because it's a private group, they want to make sure you're okay with your name and like this being used. Um, Chai Chai Sweets is here. 88 degrees here in South Carolina. Oh, I'm jelly. I'm jelly. Thanks for watching. Um, Facebook user says, I love doing hydro. It allows me to have some fresh stuff all year round. I'm not having the best luck with hydro. Let me tell you, I'm not having the best luck at all. Um, I keep thinking I've got to figure it out and no, not so much. Um, so we'll see. I don't know if it's the same Facebook user, but if it is, make sure you're signed in, my friend. Dukes and white bread waiting. Dukes is a brand of mayonnaise. Um, yeah, I've never had Dukes, although I, I'm vegan, so I, I like the, the Hellman's vegan tastes just like regular Hellman's. And I'm so, so grateful for that because it just isn't a tomato sandwich without, well, Dukes for many of you, Hellman's for many of you, and for me, the, the plant-based Hellman's is so good. Um, and I'm like, I'm total white trashing it. I like Wonder Bread <laughs> for my tomato sandwiches. For those of you overseas, it's like the wor probably the worst nutritional bread you can get. It's as white as white can be. It's just fluff. But the reason why I like that is because, first of all, it's super soft. Um, second, it reminds me of my childhood, even though we weren't allowed to have it all that often because it, it really has zero nutritional value at all. But I like to have all the flavor going into the tomato. So I do tomato, the vegan Hellman's, salt, pepper. I like truffle salt. I have to admit, I'll do a little truffle salt, pepper on that sandwich, you know, generous with the mayo. Oh, heaven. Absolutely heaven. And let me tell you, growing the tiny totem micro dwarf this year, they get to be about, eh, yeah, they get, the fruits get to be about this big. It's not the same, but I was making some tomato sandwiches out of those. So for any of you looking into what micro dwarfs to grow, I should probably do a micro dwarf episode of this. I have so much I want to talk about. I do have one micro um, in the slides today though that I want to show you. Um, Nicole, 90 degrees in Houston, Houston, Texas today. Oh, and she's got a little hot emoji. Um, yeah, well, well, I'll be there soon, not soon enough. That is for sure. Um, let's see, who am I missing here? Lester, I will always preach for long-term all year round plants of any kind, hydroponic, hydroponics, cracky, et cetera. Some water, lighting, and an air pump allows you to have growing all year round and it is so delicious. Good tip. I, I do that in soil. I, um, here, I'll show you. This one isn't officially a micro. This is Dwarf Raspberry Beret um, by Bill Yoder, one of his print series. But he told me when we interviewed him for our hmm, March episode of Tomato Talk Live that I do with Jen Joy. Hi, Jen, if you're watching. Um, he said that he grows his dwarf um, from the Prince line in one gallon pots. So I figured I'd try growing them at least for now in here and boy, they are growing just like a micro. And if, I don't know if you can see, getting some fruit here. There we go. So this is, <clears throat> excuse me, raspberry beret, almost dropped it. 1999 and Little Red Corvette are the same. I think Little Red Corvette's got quite a few fruits on it. The reason why I brought this up is because this is what I grow my micro dwarfs in. Vivo Sun is the name of the, the company. And I like this. It's a one gallon grow bag. I like their grow bags because um, they're tall. So I can bury it as much as possible. Um, tall, taller is better than wide when it comes to tomatoes, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, so hydro is a fantastic idea. I'm trying to make it work. But for me, I grow all year round indoors in soil in these grow bags under grow lights. And it's great. I love having tomatoes all year round. Excuse me a minute. Let me put this buddy back under my artificial light. Oh, I was mentioning when I, I do get to my 10 tomatoes eventually, by the way, if it's your first time watching, I do get to it eventually. I just have a lot to say. Um, so I was mentioning once they outgrow either your solo cups or I'm using the new 3.3 inch bootstrap farmer cups. Once they outgrow those, 
um, like this is an early one I planted. They go in these. This is the nine inch seedling grow bag I was talking about. I put the Amazon link in last week's episode. Um, I can try to find it for you again for anybody interested. But this is one of my varieties called Banana Noir. I started this on February 4th, fully intending on it being early. The rest of our seeds we waited. We started uh, March 26th, three weeks earlier than usual. Um, and believe me, it was tough seeing many of you plant was like torture. Um, so, uh, so I wanted those garage tomatoes, like I was talking about several minutes ago. And so they go in this, from this, they'll go into a 10 gallon grow bag as one of my garage tomatoes. The rest of them that I started on time, if they outgrow the cups and I'm pretty sure they will, cause they're growing like crazy, they'll go in these. And from here they will go in ground or in grow bag or in raised bed, whatever. So this is usually our last stop, these. And they they give you really awesome seedlings with super thick trunks. I just up, up potted this one the other day. It was long overdue. The only issue with them is they hold a lot of soil. So when you use expensive soil, um, it can be costly. So that's what one of the reasons why we held off for three weeks this year. All right, let's put this guy back. Okay. So I mentioned that the past couple of days for Kina and I have been like, oh, look at this, look at this. So I, I'm always surprised when I find a new vendor, um, always, because I feel like I spend a lot of my days, I shouldn't say a lot of my days, that makes it seem like I'm not busy and I'm just like looking at the internet. I shouldn't say that, but I spend a lot of time um researching tomatoes especially like i i tend to like tomatoes from eastern europe um love the united states of course also bill yoder fred hempel they're they're you know incredibly talented breeders um but i tend to gravitate towards like jarson is from poland kazul is from poland um so a lot of times things get lost in translation and if you watched last week, you will know that there was some debate as to whether the variety Clairvoyant, Sorcerer, and Cunning Wizard were the same variety. And I still maintain that it is after all this deep diving into um, down the rabbit hole. But I think it was researching that when I put in the Russian name into Google that I came up with this site where it's like the sky, the heavens opened up the skies opened up the angels were singing because i'm like where has this site been my entire life let me show you what it is those of you in tomato lovers collective and swap will know what i'm talking about um let's go to the homepage. this is grafsamina.com um it translates to um the seed count, I believe, as in like a count is in royalty. I'm pretty sure that's the translation, but I will put the link in the comments. Oh my gosh. Her stuff is incredible. Did I put it here? Yes, I did. Um, prices are great. And she's got some varieties where I'm just like, what? She's got Jarsons that I've never seen. I mean, I know the ver I know the version. Of course, I know Jarson one through thirty five very well, but there's because it's not stable. There's all kinds of versions out there. She's got two Jarsons. One that I'm going to show on my slides today. Oh my God, it's incredible! Hang on, let me put the thing in the chat. So if you're interested, check out graphsamina.com. There's the website. Um, the way it works. So she ships all over the world, except for um, countries that don't have postal. I know Russia, she does not, but I think pretty much anywhere else that has post office, she can ship. So I placed my order. I filled up a cart three times. Actually, I'm working on the third cart right now. Such a crazy person. Um, pressed order. And then she emailed me back with the cost and then her PayPal account. Easy peasy. And then I already had like a tracking number within 24 hours. I don't think she guarantees that. It just happened to be a good day. Um, she's very, very nice. She has joined our group. Her name's Alina. 
Um, she's from the Ukraine, like I mentioned. She's from, gosh, I forget the name of the town now. Actually, I can find out. Um, oh, it starts with a K. I'm forgetting the name of the town already. Kharkov. Kharkov, which is a war-torn area. And she shared with me that um, she this is her main source of income since she can no longer work due to the war. And um, she uh, often has to fill orders by candlelight because they, and I met somebody else today, another breeder vendor from Ukraine, same town, who shared the same thing, that they often have to turn off their electricity for big periods um, during the war. So it's been a pleasure meeting her. Her selections are unbelievable. I think they're all one euro. Yes, one euro is what I'm seeing, which translates currency wise um, on the dollar about a dollar seven. And then flat rate shipping of eight euros, very reasonable. You get 10 seeds per pack, um, some with low seed counts, maybe five, but check out her site. It's fantastic. So um, I think that's all the announcements and we're only 35 minutes in. So um, so we're doing well. So let's, I think that's a good segue for what the first tomato is going to be. Oh no, it's not actually. Um, yeah, so that's Grafsamina. Okay, first one I was talking, so Jen Joy, my, my buddy, my partner in crime, she did a couple lives, um, two Saturdays in a row, last Saturday and the Saturday before of her up potting. And we all loved it. I, I was able to watch episode one. Did I watch episode two last week? I think I did. Yes. I was able to watch most of both of them. Um, and I asked because I came across it this variety, I'd heard of it before, but you know, when you see a variety and you kind of don't pay much attention, then all of a sudden you really look into it and you're like, whoa, why is this not on my grow list? Well, this is one of those. Um, so I asked comment during her live, I asked her, have you grown this variety? And she did not think so, but she thinks she's growing it this year. She's growing like over 500 varieties. So it's understandable. She doesn't know. Um, that variety is called Muddy Mamba. Muddy Mamba. Those of you that watch me know that just looks wise, this is a Lauren tomato. Um, looks outstanding. So I don't know. I, I've had the seeds. It's not like I just got them in, but something struck. Maybe it was these pictures um, that I got from Tomate de Charme, um, who's another vendor I just placed an order with in France. Um, the uh, I came across these photos and I'm like, whoa, let me look more into this. So here's what I know from Tomato Fifu, um, a vendor from Belgium. They say recent variety in F F5 in 2013. So I'm sure it's, you know, I don't know when they last updated their information, but 2013 was 11 years ago. So I think it's safe to say that it's more stable than that now. It's co comes from a bicolored off type of black mamba, I think, which I think is on my grow list this year. I'm not growing 500 varieties, and I still kind of forget. I know it was on my initial grow list, but I don't know if it made the cut or not. I think it did. I think it did. Anyway, off type of black mamba appeared in the garden of Tatiana Kushnariva, presented to the public in 2014 by Tatiana's tomato base. That's who breeder is Tatiana's tomato base. If you watched um, mine and Jen's episode on April 5th with Craig LaHoulier, um, run, don't walk to watch that after the episode. I forgot to give a disclaimer, by the way. If you don't want to add anything to your grow list, don't watch me. Just turn off right now because you're going to want to add things on your grow list or at least for your grow list next year. Anyhow, Craig said um, that Tatiana's tomato base. I don't want to put words in his mouth, but I think he called her that site, the premier site to get information on tomatoes. He was a really big fan. Tatiana's tomato base. If, if you guys research tomatoes at all, I'm, you likely know it. Um, so let's see, off type of black mamba, beefsteak fruit, 150 to 350 grams, round and ribbed at the top. Beautiful purple red color with green stripes. The flesh is also green with pink marbling, multi-located, not sure what that translates to, 
juicy and fleshy with a deliciously sweet taste. Has anybody grown Muddy Mamba? I would love to hear from you. Um, hey, Malachi Jen's here. Checking in briefly after planting Vilma micro tomatoes and my daughter's first grade class. Oh, you did? I didn't know you were going to do that. Yay. Oh, that's awesome sauce. Thanks to Lauren for sharing extra seeds for me so I have enough for all the scholars. Oh, Jen, I thought that fell through. That makes me so happy. Oh, I hope you're taking pictures. Well, you probably can't take pictures because of privacy, but that's amazing. That's amazing. I'm so glad to hear that. Um, Shannon, a long keeper, she says, I've got two long keeper varieties, but I don't have a suitable place to hang them all fall winter, so I've not started them. They cannot freeze, right? But need a cool place to be hung or is your, in your kitchen okay? Yes, from my understanding, they don't need to be hung. If you've got the space, that's great. But um, I know Evan Gregoire of Heirloom Seed House, he, I think his process was like wrapping them in newspaper and putting them in a drawer in a single single shelf. Some people use shelving. Um, I freeze tomatoes, started last year as a matter of fact. Um, I don't know with long keepers, like part of the thing with long keepers, I believe is most of them you are supposed to pick green or at first blush and then they continue to ripen. Um, so you wouldn't want to pick obviously when still green and freeze them, but you know, grow them out and um, then freeze them. You know, they're, they're definitely not the same, but somebody suggested it in the group last year and I was running out of, you know, I can a lot. My tomato crack recipe, which is slow roasted tomatoes with herbs, garlic and olive oil. Um, I can a lot of that. And so I was looking for something a bit different and um, somebody suggested I freeze them. So I got them frozen in like a single layer in Ziploc baggies. Unfortunately, I don't have a deep freezer, so but I do have two refrigerators with freezers, so I'm at limited space. Um, but they're great. The skin comes right off. Not that I really care about that, but I've used them to make salsa. My own banana noir, frozen, defrosted, makes an awesome salsa. Awesome sauce salsa. So um, don't you don't have to hang them, Shannon. That's just one way of doing it. I'm I would love to hang mine. I haven't come up with the right space yet. Um, Wonder if maybe my garage, I don't know if it gets too cold. I don't know. We're going to have to slowly ease Mr. Tomato Head into this one. <laughs> Has anybody grown muddy, muddy mamba? Um, oh, Samantha went to um, graph Samena. 64 items in my cart right now. Easy to do, right? And she has some amazing crosses, one of which I'm going to be showing today. Some crosses I've never heard of before. Just super exciting. Um, oh, Luke, back to my raspberry beret, which is Bill Yoder's from his Prince line. The aftertaste of raspberry beret makes me think about raspberry. The taste is amazing. I remember you telling me that, Luke. I'm excited for that. Um, are the nine inch reusable? You probably could. <clears throat> um, she's talking about those seedling grow bags, I assume. <clears throat> you probably could. I don't. Um, Usually by the time I'm ready to plant, the roots have got grown through it. Um, they say you can plant in them. I wouldn't personally. They they are if they're biodegradable, it takes a long time. I experiment. I wasn't really intending on doing it, but I I like experimenting. So one year I experimented doing that. Dug it up after a year, and it was still fully intact. But what I do, they they I'll show you again. They um. I rip, rip this off. So I'll just do the start of it. You, go, you can see I just started tearing it. Tear it right off. Doesn't matter if some of the roots come with it. They tear it right off and then we plant in the ground. So that's why I haven't reused them. Um, they tend to get a little bit of like algae on the outside and stuff too. But you probably could. I mean, they... You know, if they're not biodegradable after a year, they definitely withstand at least being in the ground. So you probably could. Um, offhand, I don't remember how expensive they were. I can try to find the link and put it in the comments again. But I do love these. I like them because you can um, uh, air prune. Air pruning is a process that prevents roots of a plant from getting completely root bound. 
that when the roots find air, they will stop and then put all their energy into making the plant. Um, if they, when things get root bound, when they're in a pot too long, that's too small for it, or just, you know, been in there too long, they keep going and going and going and wrapping, um, not really strangling themselves, but not the healthiest root system. So these, with these, the roots, they'll come out a little bit, um, but the same as the seedling or as the one gallon grow bags that I use. I love grow bags because of the air pruning properties. And my micros, if you guys have seen, my micros always, for the most part, look awesome. And I, I'm convinced it's the soil and the grow bags and the air pruning about it or the air pruning that it does. If it's your first time watching, this is basically how the shows go. I show a variety, then I get sidetracked for 20 minutes. So I hope you like tomatoes as much as I do. Michael's here. I spent five minutes on that site before running away. Too many cool things to not buy. Michael, did you see the micros? She's got one I'm going to show today, a micro that I've never heard of. I mentioned um, that... Um, in TL, in Tomato Lovers Collective and Swap, we've got some awesome resource sheets in there. I already mentioned our Longkeeper winter storage one. Um, Kina's created them on, on variegated varieties, woolly varieties. Jen has done um, top 100 tomatoes of Dr. Carolyn Mail from this book. She's done dwarf tomato project varieties. So it's definitely a collaborative effort with my two partners of TLC. And if you guys are watching, I love you both. I love doing this. We're, we're the best team, and I'm so grateful for that. Anyway, where are you going, Lauren? I also have a micro and mini dwarf spreadsheet that is ongoing. Um, I'm always finding out about new micro or mini dwarf tomatoes, and I consider that anything 24 inches or under. Um, kind of think of mini dwarf as like 16 to 24 inches or 18 to 24 inches. So I'm always, and I'm, I'm obsessed with micros. I like growing them, trying them, reviewing them, and then sharing seeds um, and educating people and saying, this is the one you want to grow and this one, not so much. My ultimate goal is just to find like a couple really good varieties that I'm going to grow year round. And I've got Vilma, Candyberry. And a uh, new one I just reviewed that has kind of uh, been mentioned in the group a lot, which is Henry Harrington's Dwarf Cherry. And um, that one, I'm going to do a three-way taste off of those three. Also, Tiny Totem, I'm a big fan, the ones that have mini beef steaks. And I'm using that variety to cross and make my own micros. So stay tuned for that. Um, where was I going with the my Oh, so finding new micros is exciting to me. And when I found this site, besides being blown away by the one I'm going to show you next, she had a couple micros, one in particular that I was like, OMG, this is awesome. Okay, so let's get to number two. <laughs> this is why I can only do 10. I've mentioned this a few times. I'm So if you are new to watching, I am obsessed with Jarson tomatoes. Jarson is a um, a breeder from Poland. He crossed, um, he's got 35 different crosses. I love them because he uses my favorite tomato, Malachite Box, in a lot of them. He also uses some more of my favorite tomatoes like Cherokee Purple, Ananas Noir, um, really some of the classics. Um, Black Crim, I think. Orange Strawberry some Kazulas. He's got incredible crosses. So last year I only grew two because seeds in the United States were hard to come by last year. They're no, they're starting to get there um, between Kina, Jen and I. We feel it's our responsibility to grow all the Jarsons so we can share with you all. We also have a grow out in TLC of a Jarson team. Shout out if you're on the Jarson team, Team Jarson. So anyway, I've been giving out seeds for the two that I grew, Jarson 1, which I'm calling Jarson 1 Tricolor because there's now, I swear, every time I turn around, there's a new version of Jarson 1 out there. They're not exactly stable, um, which for me is part of the fun of it, and many look different. So um, Jarson 1 is a cross between Great White and Kazula 25. This is what my version looks like. So if you got Jarson 1 seeds from me, 
This is the plant that you got seeds from. They are big. Cindy C posted about it from the Philippines in the group just yesterday or the day before, I believe, showing it's not quite ripe yet, but a really whopper of a Jarson 1. They get big. The two varieties I grew were Jarson 1 and Jarson 18 version 3. Both got really big. We had a Jarson 18 3 that was as big as my head. Um, but all of my Jarson 1s on this plant, there wasn't a small one in the bunch. And look at it. I have maintained that this is the most beautiful version of Jarson 1 I've seen, if not the most beautiful tomato I've seen, honestly. It's got this high gloss to it. It's got this, if, I don't know if you can see. Well, you really can't see because I've covered it up at the bottom with my, my thing there, but it comes to a point at the bottom. It's really spectacular. By the way, I never use filters on any of my pictures, um, whether I'm sharing them from elsewhere or myself. I'm not a fan of people filtering pictures of tomatoes. I want to see what it actually looks like. So anyway, this is my Jarson one. Then I came across Grafsamina, my new friend, our new friend Alina from the Ukraine. And what did I find? This. This is her version of Jarson one. Look at this tomato. Isn't it so interesting how the same cross, right? What Great White and Cazula 25 can make two completely different looking tomatoes. Now mine comes to a point like these. These are more, I would consider these more of a heart shape. I wouldn't consider mine a heart, kind of maybe a flattened heart. And the other Jarson ones I've seen aren't, don't have any point, um, but this is something special that she offers. So on her site, grafsamina.com, um, it's just listed as Jarson one. So, and if you go to Tomato Eden, they've got like five different versions of Jarson one. So they're kind of all over the place. So if somebody says they're growing out Jarson one, I always ask, did you get the seeds from me? And then I know it's this baby, but boy, as soon as I saw this on her site, I'm like, oh, I'm in trouble. I need to look at the site better. And boy, it's some, it really is special. So not sure what else to say other than look at it. It's got the stripes, which mine totally does not have stripes. It's got more marbling, if you will. And you would think like, do I need to grow jars in one again? Yes, I absolutely do. My seeds won't come in in time, likely, for this to get put in soil. But I only, I'm only starting, I think, three or four varieties that I've grown before. And I, I just had to grow this Jarson 1 again. It's special. It also tastes delicious. It was really refreshing. When I wanted like a go-to tomato, like I just wanted to slice into something like a steak, this is the tomato I went for. This and Uptown Funk, although those are smaller. Um, so I'm growing this one. I'm growing Malachite Box again. Um, what's the other one? I'll have to think. There's a third. Well, I'm growing some of my, I'm stabilizing some of my own crosses. So I'm growing all those. Rosy Coyote, Strawberry Coyote, and Wiley Sweet Cherry. Still stabilizing my little Napoleon Mini Dwarf. I don't know. There's another big one. We're growing Malachite Box again, only because it's our number one tomato. And, you know, always hoping that something's going to come across that's just as good, if not better. We want to be able to compare it. Tomatoes to tomatoes. So that's Jarson one from Um Did I give her a banner? No, I did not. Um, let me do that right now. Actually, I'll just put the link in the comments again. Grafsamina.com. Who else has gone on their, on her site and gone down the rabbit hole? I'm seeing, I'm going to get to some of your comments because I'm seeing some people that have some pretty sizable carts going on. Okay, here's the website. Let's see, I haven't talked to you guys in a bit. Um, Samantha already said she's got 64. Luke's got 50 and not done yet. Um, oh, back to the, the grow bags. Thank you, Cheryl. I grew my peppers in the nine inch white bags. You can reuse them, but I cut my mine down the side to transplant. Good to know. Thanks, Cheryl. Um, 
<laughs> Alex, no, you cannot, Alex. I definitely can't go anywhere near that website. It's dangerous. It's dangerous. Here's the woman responsible for our obsession with lawn keepers. Hi, Kit. Um, uh, yes, Sherva. If you're tuning in late, type in hashtag tomato, and I will be doing a drawing at the end of the episode of five names, and you get to choose um, from a selection of seeds. And I'm, I was able to get through a whole bunch more prizes this week. If you're still waiting, um, it's coming. If, if you still are waiting for something that you really want to get in this year, just private message me. Um, gardening, just, just gardening on YouTube says, I had to switch over from Facebook to YouTube, was having too many problems. But if you ever need any tips or pointers with hydro, I would be more than happy. I put the micros you sent in hydro and love soil. Awesome sauce. Not sure who you are gardening, but let me know. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, also, my, my buddy, our producer, Michael Kelly, has been, if I go to him, I know he'll help me. It just feels like an epic fail. Everything I do, I've tried crack key. I've got two units. Basil's going all right. I feel like one of the, one of my units, the pump isn't going on. Um, that's a whole thing. Um, Luke said, I could choose to pay in euros or dollars. I took euros because I liked it. I didn't realize that. Did not realize that. I know she's got a button at the bottom of the page. Thanks, Luke. I appreciate that. Um, let me see if I can scroll. It's going to be different on your device too. Oh yeah. If you can see, oops, down at the very bottom right here. If you look this, this guy, the red button, you can um, go between English and Ukrainian. Um, I found it very easy. Some, some sites, it, it gets to be a bit painful with the translations and using Google Translate. This one was not for me. Very, very user-friendly for me. Um, Chris loved her varieties, but also loved being able to support her by a simple thing as buying seeds. Amen, sister. I feel exactly the same way. She's so nice. You know, after I placed my first order, she emailed me with my price and where to PayPal. And I always use the opportunity to tell people like that about our group. And I did. And she's a member now. Elena's her name, as I've said. And she's so nice. If you've ordered, you likely have gotten an email back from her also. And you will see for yourself. She's so nice. She asked me to extend a, a thank you message that I shared in the group for her this morning. She really is just so very grateful. Like I mentioned, this is her um, her primary source of income. And gosh, I mean, it's like win-win, right? You support somebody from Ukraine who needs help while fueling your need, in air quotes, for epic tomatoes. Speaking of epic tomatoes, we're getting really close to farming in another date with our friend Craig LaHoulier, it may just be our July episode. We'll let you know soon. Oh, D, you're growing Muddy Mama this year too. Awesome sauce. Awesome sauce. Kit. Oh, look, I'm really back far with the comments. Sorry, guys. I have seeds for this as Kit. Um, that's right, Cheryl. Thank you. It is a sister to Captain Lucky. Um, yes, thank you. Did I not write the breeder on there? How can I not? Oh, because I've got it stabilized by Tatiana, but it's a Millard Murdoch, isn't it? Hmm. Where did I get my info from? Where did I? It's from Tomato Fifu. My apologies to Miller, the late Millard Murdoch. Um, sorry about that. Yeah, so it is a sister to. Um, I know. I knew Black Mamba was. I guess I. Is Muddy Mamba for sure, or did it was it um, an off type that grew in Tatiana's garden that she stabilized from Black Mamba? Not sure. Um, but thank you, Cheryl. Captain Lucky, by the way, is one of our favorites from last year. Um, epic tomato, fantastic tomato. Luke's grown. Every time I mention a variety, Luke's like, I've grown it. Very tasty. Good to know. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, hi, Lynn. Glad you're here. 
Um, Sniper Cat says, I think I will grow Muddy Mamba next year. Thin Skin. You know I love that, Luke. Oh, memories. Kina says, Luke Van Doren, I got my seeds from you, our first trade. I was just talking with Luke about our first trade just the other day. And I was thinking about ours, Kina, just today. You sent me seeds for Old Norway. That was in another group we were in that we are no longer in. Um, but yeah, I remember our first trade too. You you knew about my micro dwarf tomato project, you and Annalise, and you both gifted me with some really um, rare, at the time for me, varieties. And I'll never forget that. Never forget that. Thank you. Um, Samantha says she's been eyeing this one as well. We're back at Muddy Mamba. Hey, Mambo, Mambo Italiano. Go, go, go. Um, Samantha says, in regard to long keepers, I've kept them in a box in separated layers with newspaper. Thanks, Samantha. I'm pretty sure that's what Evan said he did as well. Oh, you scared me here, Yvette. Muddy, Muddy Mamba is really worth growing. You will love it. That T at the end of is made me initially think isn't. And I'm like, oh. Well, I'm, I'm glad it's worth it because seeds accidentally fell into soil and plants are accidentally germinated and growing. Oops. Um, oh, Luke, you got me again. Lots of seeds and very juicy. Muddy Mamba, mix of GWR and classic taste thin skin. That's all you really need to say. You know that, Luke. You got me. Um, back to our lawn keepers. I had fresh tomatoes on Christmas Eve. We pick, wrapped in newspaper, single layer, and placed in basement. Worked great. Missy, is this long keeper or regular varieties? I suppose it's got to be variety with thicker skin. Um, thin skin, I think, would rot after a while. Um, may extend it, but or maybe you pick green and ripe. I don't know. LOL, banana smore salsa. Don't knock it till you tried it. My banana smore actually doesn't look... Uh, Eh, not really. Take it. I take it back. Oh, I wonder if I can show it. I can present another slide. Let me see if I can do that. So my Bananas Noir, if you don't know, is an accidental cross between um, a Nanas Noir, here it is, and an unknown cherry. Here it is. So I've given seeds out to many, many of you. I don't sell seeds ever, but this little beauty is saladet sized. Oh my God, on the flavor. It's fantastic. Um, we found it in our garden several years ago and we worked for years to stabilize it. Seems stable, although Ke our, my friend Kina here got some weird dimpled variety last year that really didn't resemble it whatsoever. But those of you, the few of you that grew seeds last year ended up with something looking like this. Thin skin, seedy, but even though it's thin skin, it tends to have really great shelf life. And it's very sweet, very sweet, which normally I'm not a huge fan of, but the sweetness is followed up by a little bit of tang and it's the flavor extends all the way through. I'm not a big fan of um, tomatoes that kind of get watery towards the end. I love this tomato and I'm not just saying that because it's ours. I like it better than a Nana Soir. Um, I like a Nana Soir, but I feel like it lacks a bit of flavor for me. It, this is a completely different tomato. It's not even like comparing tomatoes to tomatoes. Um, looks the same, but smaller, but tastes completely different. I think it's a cross with coyote cherry personally, but don't know for sure. It's got a lot of seeds and it, it grows tall. I recommend everybody that gets seeds from me gets an information sheet that I share, just kind of the history and how I recommend growing it. Um, tends to germinate like a rock star, grows fast, grows tall, the stems stay thin. I usually double or triple stem and it's productive and it will last till your first frost. And I've heard from many people, including Malachite Gem, that it seems to be disease resistant. You would think I bred it myself. I wish I did, but my friendly neighborhood pollinator bred that for us and we stabilized it. And I couldn't be more proud to share seeds from it. If you don't have seeds and you want seeds, private message me. Um, you can send me a self-addressed stamped envelope. I would be more than happy to share. At this point, I've shared seeds with all over the world, which gets me very excited. 
very excited and humbled. It's a little nerve wracking. I've got to say, like you want everybody to like it, which is impossible because we all have different tastes. Some people like black beauty, which I think is the most disgusting thing I've ever had in my life. Um, but it's going to be impossible for everybody to like it. I'm just happy to share it and you can grow for yourself and see if you like it. All right, let's move on. So I shared this incredible Jarson one from Graf Samina. What's next? Oh, this one I've known about for a while, but this is another one that like, I heard about it through Kina. And again, I've been so busy that I kind of skim past it. I think she probably sent me a picture and I'm like, oh, that's nice. Just the name should have given me a hint. But I think I, we asked a question. I don't know if it was in this broadcast last week or in the group. Like, what is your most anticipated variety? I don't remember if it was a group poster here. Um, we've been sharing La Vorgienne for a while. Mine tends to change all the time, too. Kina's, at least as of last week, was this variety. Oh, hang on. Where's the slide? Tell me I didn't. <gasps> no. No. Hang on. I got to get this up here. I've got to get this up here. What did I do? I forgot to put that slide on. <gasps> oh, my goodness. All right. Talk amongst yourselves. I've got to get this up because this is just inexcusable. Can't be this one. No, no, no. Did I, did I put it up at all? Hang on. No, I forgot to add it completely. <gasps> did I make it? All right. Talk, talk amongst yourself, gang. It'll be worth it. You, I can't just talk about it. I would either have to leave it for next week, skip over it, or just because I can't talk about it without showing the photo. <gasps> okay. Whew. Got it here. Let me just upload it. And then got to share a new slideshow. Bear with me. Present slides. Sorry, gang. Not the first time this has happened. By the way, I've, I've been tending to kick myself out of my broadcasts lately. I don't know why. Don't know what I do. Oop. All right, let's try this again, hopefully. Nope, still didn't work. Hang on. One more time. We'll try one more time, and then I'll just have to skip over it. But after that buildup, I've got to show it. While we're waiting, why don't you guys share what most anticipated variety are you looking forward to this year? Where the heck is it? Oh, okay. I've got it. I've got it. But seriously, even while we're, I want to hear from you guys, what variety are you most anticipating growing as of today? So this is the variety. Let me build that up again. Kina had it as her most anticipated. I had heard about it. I kind of like, I meant to ask her about it, but really kind of didn't until just the other day. Um, and this is it. Malachite Elf. Now, just the name Malachite, it's it's not a cross between Malachite box. Malachite is the name of a green gem. Um, this is by breeder Lyudmila Lyudmila Kozasova of Latvia. It's a cross between Reinhard's Green Heart and Apricot Zebra. Just look at this beauty. So this was Kina's answer as to her most anticipated variety. I'm in the process of ordering this at the moment from the breeder Ludmila Kozasova. I apologize, Ludmila, if I'm if you're watching, I'm brutalizing your name. My apologies. She's an incredibly gifted breeder. She's actually in our group in Tomato Lovers Collective and Swap. I think I may remember like from several months ago 
her um, sharing some of the varieties she offers, but this one sort of escaped me. I don't know how it looks just like they call it, sometimes overseas, they call it marmalade inside. Just look at it. I love the red veining. Um, likely will be too late for me to get these in for this year, but it is going, definitely growing on next year's um, grow list. What does she have to say about it? She says, green heart of Reinhardt, apricot, zebra, tricolor was achieved from that, she says, with delicious taste, fruit notes, long fruit bearing and good laying, 1.8 meters, weight of the fruits are from 200 to 500 grams, her new arrival of the season. Oh, oh, look at this. I know Kina's growing it. If anybody else is growing it, you got seeds and you knew about this all along, tell me. Um, hi, Kathy. Glad you're here. Malachite Elf looks amazing. I know. I know. So she sells um, privately over private message on, me on Messenger on Facebook. And I have her, her profile, which I'm going to put in the comments. She is in our group also, um, as I mentioned. So check out her Facebook page and her photo albums. I'm ordering several things from her. She also has some really outstanding Jarsons, but this one, I should, I really should know better. If Kina's got something on her grow list, I really need to just spend more time checking it out because this is very, very me. Um, Terry Crafty, YouTube is kicking a lot out. Hmm, not sure what you mean. Meaning that I'm cutting out? Is that what you mean, Terry? Hi there, thanks for watching. Sean says, my Wi-Fi is in and out and lagging, but I'm here. Um, yeah, mine seems to be fine. Usually it alerts me. Let me close a couple windows if it's a problem, but it's not today. Let me try to remove a couple of these. Move from studio. Um, let's hear what you guys are excited to grow this year. Um, oh, Kina says, look at it. It has to be good. Agreed, my friend. And it's got Reinhardt's variety. Um, in here, did I do, I meant to do a breakdown of Reinhardt's green heart and apricot zebra to show you what the crosses look like, but I forgot. Um, Terry says, I'm new, any micro dwarf? Did I send you any micro dwarfs, Terry? I hope so. Got some really great ones. Um, Facebook user, if this is you, Jarson one tricolor and long keepers. Fantastic. Make sure you're signed in um, because as of right now, if this is your comment, you're not. So go to facebook.com backslash StreamYard, press that blue button or watch on my YouTube channel. I will put the link one more time to my YouTube live streaming viewing link. Um, and make sure if you guys are joining us late, make sure you type in hashtag tomato in the comments. Uh, hashtag tomato and I'll do a drawing at the end of the episode which will come sometime today, by the way. I promise. We're on, a, we're on variety number three. <laughs> anyway, thank you, Kina, for bringing this variety to my attention and the breeder. Um, we've been talking. She's very, very nice. And she, like I asked you yesterday, Kina, if she was in our group. She said yes. And then when I saw what her name is um, translated, I'm like, oh, of course I know the name. So make sure you check out her Facebook page. She does... Um, you can order from her directly right on private messenger. So that's exciting. Let me make sure I'm not missing any comments. Chai Chai Sweet says, my banana snore seedlings are super healthy and tall. Good to hear it. Good to hear it. Dee's Garden Adventures. I need some banana snore if it's really sweet. It really is sweet. Um, private message me or email me if you would like seeds. We can either do a trade. You can send a self-addressed stamped envelope. Here is my email address. Brampton Gardner. Hello, Mrs. Tomato. Hi, chat. Hi, Brampton Gardner. Thanks for being here. Um, Cynthia says, Gorge. Hi, Cynthia. I'm glad you're here. I'm sorry if I haven't said hi yet. Um, I'm thinking with the back comments that um, you mean banana snoir. Could be this too. I mean, this is beautiful. The shape of it. I love the striping and I love that interior. It looks incredible. 
Can't figure out how to get StreamYard on this new phone, Gur. There shouldn't be anything for you to download, my friend. It's just, it's a web-based program. So there's no app or anything like that. Just just watch on YouTube. Um, the, I just put the link in a little while ago, a couple minutes ago. Um, just press on that. That's all you need to do. Nothing special to watch StreamYard. Um, does the purchase include paperwork to get through customs? It does not. It does not. I've never had to have that, to be honest with you, from any of my European vendors. Um, I know Tomato Eden, she goes through to have a plant passport, which I think is effective for Europe. But no, as with any of the vendors that we share, ordering is at your own risk. I've had a couple things from vendors confiscated, but more often, way more often than not, they come through just fine. But um, no, that does not. I think the only the only um, vendor I've heard of that does that is Nick, Nick I can never pronounce it, Nikotova, whatever. Um, but no, and, and there's something you can do on your end that somebody in the group was sharing about a few weeks ago, but then it turned out that that's not effective for, or not applicable anyway for home growers. Not sure. You can look into it. But no, this does not include um, that at all. Um, but I'm ordering three times and I'm personally not worried about it. But you can certainly approach her, Alina, about it and maybe she can talk to you about that. Um, let's see. Am I missing anything from back here? Future of Gardening says I'm about to go pick a... Go figure. Tomato off the vine for a turkey sandwich. You spoil brat. Not fair. Not fair. Happy for you. Very happy for you. Lester's Gardening says, agreed. Healthy addiction, at least health-wise. For sure. For sure. Um, Amanda's here. Late because of dinner. Kids always have to eat. Don't you just hate that? Don't they know where you have a busy tomatoing schedule today? D says, my most anticipated variety is an Al Alifira variety. One translates to Seven Rivers Red, and one is Bicek Altamins Almatins Sherni. I'm going to be sharing one of his varieties um, in here eventually. I'm growing several of his this year. Um, I'm growing Seven Rivers Shore, or no, Seven, ri seven Rivers... Seven Rivers Shore, I think, and then Almaty Tricolor, Alifira of Secret, magician growing a handful of his this year um he, he's uh, he's a breeder for those of you that may not know from kazakhstan i'm i'm become a little bit obsessed with him also those sound great the seven rivers red is part and um, you probably know d is part of a series he's got seven rivers shore seven rivers pink seven rivers red seven rivers tricolor whole bunch you can find i think all of them on tomatoeden.net and probably some in Grafsamina also. Um, Brampton Gardener says, my micros are doing well in the greenhouse. That's good to hear, really good to hear. I love not all micros, some really have no flavor, but there's others, and I'm getting to the bottom of it, others that really have great flavor. And boy, it sure makes the winter non-tomato months very nice and flavorful and tomato-y. Um, Cynthia says, I have so many tomatoes that I'm excited about this year. Me too. It is tough to pick just one. Um, Kina says, got to go to bed. We'll catch up with the rest of the show tomorrow. Bye, Kina. Understandable. Um, Ashley. Hi, Ashley. My most anticipated is maple syrup because the seedling looks so healthy and has held up the best no matter how much I've stressed it. <laughs> maple syrup, that almost made my grow list this year. That looks outstanding. That really looks like a beautiful tomato, for sure. Um, hi, my happy place. Glad you're here. Um, just got done with work. Have to catch up from the beginning later. Well, in typical Lauren fashion, you've only missed three varieties, and we're an hour, what, 20 minutes into the show. <laughs> um, I think I'm just about caught up. Facebook user, some tomatoes with no flavor, but great compact shape. Could be good for breeding, absolutely. If this is you, make sure you sign in, my friend, or watch on YouTube. You won't um, be registered for prizes, and I don't know who you are. Um, but yes, compact shape, good for breeding, for sure. That's part of the reason why I'm using Tiny Totem to breed my micros. I love the compact shape and the size of the fruit, 
and they taste great. So I'm getting some, I've got some exciting stuff on the horizon. I think I've got F1 growing right now um, of tiny totem and funny plum yellow. And I've just crossed it with, um, well, I'll leave some more as a surprise. I've got, I'm waiting for this one to ripen and I'll be ready to go on an F1 for another one too. Um, oh, how do I register? Um, I'll, I'll say again, but your best bet, honestly, at this point is to watch on my YouTube channel and I'll put it one more time. Um, you have to grant StreamYard permission when you log in. So you can go to streamyard.com backslash Facebook and click the blue button or just watch on my YouTube channel. Um, the reason being is because this is a third party platform that I use and we're from a private group. So um, they need your permission because on my end, you just come up as Facebook user. I know it looks fine on your end, but all right, here is the YouTube viewing link right there in the comments. Um, Ramonte with some, Ramonte is always great with helpful tips. Um, Longkeeper tomatoes have different genes. They ripen very slowly from the inside to the outside. Long storage tomatoes just stay for a long time without losing taste quality. Did not know that. Did not know that, Ramonte. Very, very helpful. I may need to um, to pick your brain about that for my resource sheet on long keepers. Good to know. Which I guess makes sense um, because, you know, I've had some varieties that keep longer on the counter. Banana Smoir is one of them. Um Little Napoli is another one. There's some that just are, you know, will last forever. Last year I grew Benevento, Fred Hempel's F1 variety, and that was a long lasting one too. But you wouldn't necessarily consider that like a long keeper um, or winter storage tomato. You know, a Pianolo or Ramelette or Colgar, Penjar, all of those. It's, you know, kind of a different breed. So that makes sense, but I'd like to pick your brain more. Um, Cynthia says, I'm excited to grow out the Wiley's Bananas Noir. I still need to plant nightingale seeds. Um, you mean Wiley Sweet Cherry, which is our um, one of our coyote crosses. And then I think I also gave you my other coyote crosses, strawberry coyote and rosy coyote. We'll see what comes out this year. Um, Maddie says, I'm growing purple rain this year. I received from the group. Also, Papa Kalapa from Valerie. Good to know. Um, all right, let's get back to, what did I do now? Okay, phew, I'm, a, I'm more hot messy today than usual. All right, so the last one we saw was, well, last one we saw was Malachite Elf. Here's another one from Graf Samina. I mentioned that she has some interesting crosses that I've never heard of before. This is one of them that accidentally fell into my cart and I accidentally ordered. It's called Long Tall. It's a cross between Long Tall Sally and Pit Viper. She also has another cross, which I meant to put up uh, with using, um, last week I mentioned Her Majesty's Grandmother tomato, which looks outstanding. She's got a cross with that, with something else, which is escaping me right now. I mean, how this site has escaped me until now, I have no idea. So this is a cross between Long Tall Sally and Pit Viper. Let me show you. So this is the original Long Tall Sally on the left, which was developed by Blaine Horton. And Pit Viper is on the right, developed by Keith Miller. Put those together and you get this beautiful thing. Um, what else do we know about it? She says it's a very interesting variety with good stability mid-season striking giant bicolor in the shape of beautiful hearts, orange background with crimson blush throughout the fruit. It's a bush that's 1.9 meter in height, strong, densely leafy. Stems are strong. There are three to four fruits in the cluster. The yield is very high. The fruits themselves are large, weighing 400 to 650 grams. Stunningly beautiful, both inside and out. The taste is sweet and rich with sourness, very tasty and juicy. The pulp is of fantastic colors, as we can see. Um, one of the brightest in the planting season, there's practically only juice inside. <gasps> practically only juice inside. The fruit is drunk completely. 
highest score in all parameters, a favorite. This is These are her words, Elena's words from Graf Samina. So she uses, one of the great things about her site is she uses eight parameters um, to grade her tomatoes. And I forget what they are, but there's like productivity, color, flavor, but there's eight. And she uses all of those to come up with like, you know, she, she shares her, her ratings for all of those. So she, this one, she says, has the highest score in all parameters. So, I mean, just look at it. I love that. That striping is so unique. I love the shape of it. Um, I haven't really seen anything on the with the outside color quite like that. So this is really a gorgeous tomato. Um, Amanda, oh, darn, not pit viper height, though. No, it's not a dwarf. Not a dwarf. Sniper cat, that is beautiful. Now I want long tall Sally and pit viper. Well, if you're just tuning in, the um, I'll put the site the website up again. She's from the Ukraine. She's in the um, one of the war torn parts of Ukraine. Her electricity gets turned off a couple times a day, every day, and uh, this is her primary source of income. So you get you get win win situation. You help somebody out who's um, in need and you feed your tomato um, addiction for sure. Um, Cynthia says, I have pit viper. The inside looks succulent on that cross. Make you say, dang, it does. Slap your mama, right? Looks awesome. Wendy says, I want to try that. Wow. Yes. Um, Kim says, this might be the one you were thinking of. Your Majesty and Babushki Viney or Your Majesty and Grana Whiny uh, yellow and pink. Yes, that is exactly what I'm thinking of. And I ordered that as well. That was on my order one. Both of these were. Looks outstanding. Let me see if I can pull that up quickly to show you guys. Because nobody has anything else to do, right? We can spend all day doing this. It's really great. Um, I mean, just the Your Majesty's, Her, Her Majesty's grandmother is outstanding. But the cross. Let's see, it's not coming up in search because um, I'm typing it in English is probably why. Let's see, will it come up easily? Let's see if I come in orange maybe. Um, let me just type in pit, see what happens. No, or not pet. Um, majesty. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Let me show this baby. So this is your majesty and babushki viney or your ma your majesty's grandmother and grandma whiny yellow and pink. Look at this baby. Just get a load of that. Gorgeous. Wasn't one of my 10 today, but hey, we'll add another one in, right? I did order it. That is for sure. What she says about this, an excellent combination of two varieties, as the name suggests. Fantastically beautiful mid-season bicolor in the shape of a beautiful, sophisticated heart. Orange background and crimson blush throughout the fruit. Bush is powerful, up to two meters in exhaust. The stems are strong. There are three to six fruits in a cluster. Harvest is very high. Even I was surprised. Stunningly beautiful, both inside and out. The taste is acid-free, delicate, fruity, sweet, and very juicy. The pulp is juicy, aromatic, almost without seeds. Highest score in all parameters, top favorite. And she has a YouTube channel. Also, she's showing up. Babushki Vini. Here she's showing the video. Nice, right? I'm telling you guys, if you haven't checked out your site, her site yet, she's got, she's your Her Majesty. I should bow down to her because what fantastic varieties she has. Um, thank you, Kim, for um, sharing that. Um, Cynthia, I'd like to know everything about a tomato. The more info, the better. Same, Cynthia. Thank you for saying that. It's one of the things I love about her site. First of all, her photos are outstanding, as you can see. Um, 
absolutely outstanding, no filters. And she really takes her time to know a lot about a tomato. Um, info on the Jarson was, I have to talk to her about the info on the Jarson because it was a little, I was confused by that. But in general, she really puts a lot of time and effort um, into all. And then, and then her eight parameters and grading it really like, it's a great site. I have no idea. It's not like it's a new site. I, I still, I'll say this till the cows come home. I have no idea how it's escaped my radar until now, but I sure am glad it stopped escaping my radar. Um, Darla, I should have watched this before finalizing my order. Funny you say that because Kina was placing an order, I forget if it was yesterday or today. I don't know, Tomato World is just uh, morph, but um, I made sure to mention, I said, you did catch that cross, right? And she missed it too. I, I don't know how I'm missing things. That's why I've got my third card I'm working on now. Um, Austin Blanton, I'm on the YouTube now as well. Should I enter here too? No, you don't need to. Just if you're watching from the Facebook group, um, you need to grant permission because we're Facebook group is a private group. But no, if you're watching on the public YouTube channel, you do not need to worry about granting permission. Um, Future of Gardening says, love all the different cultivars in that family. I know, I know. So, oh, Cynthia, you're killing me. I wonder if that one would make a delicate scone jam. <gasps> now that's a tomato jam is a recipe. I do have a recipe or we have a recipe file in our guides. I haven't even put my tomato crack in there. It is, the recipe is in our group files, but I don't think we've added anything to the recipe column. I'm sure that will change as the tomato season um, goes on. Brampton Gardner says, I can't get over how many varieties. I know, I know. Uh, Lisa Poet, her site is really, really is beautiful. I agree, I agree. And Future of Gardening, I'm going to be an addict after seeing this site. Yes, you will, you will. Hi, Elaine. I almost missed it. I really miss these live podcasts. Between gardening now and taking my husband to his doctor appointments, I don't get to be involved that much lately. You know what? That's okay. And I'm sorry you're taking your husband to doctor's appointments, but that's why it's recorded. Um, the only benefit of watching live is, well, we get to talk together. And also I give out the prizes at the end. Um, I'm scared to look. I know. I know. I'm an enabler. My wallet, ouch, I know, I know. But at the very least, um, the prices are very reasonable. I mean, $1.07 per variety, US dollars, um, and then eight euros shipping, very reasonable. 10 seeds per pack for almost all, she says. Um, so I'm excited. When I get my orders, I'm going to do a live unboxing for sure because I got some really really great things. And it's funny because you think all these varieties are so rare, but, you know, Kina, Jen, and myself, and all of us, actually, when we come across a new vendor we get excited about, we share it in the group. We all order, so they're no longer rare to us varieties, are they? Um, oh, Lisa Poet, you're Lisa, Lisa Reed, the best I can do until I figure out this phone. Hey, if you're, you're watching us, I see you just fine. If you're watching us, that's all you need to do. There's nothing at all you know, there's no app to download for StreamYard. The only thing you need to know for StreamYard is if you're watching from inside the Facebook group, Tomato Lovers Collective and Swap, you need to grant permission. But if that's confusing or troublesome for any of you, and I know it is for some, just watch on YouTube and you're you're good to go. All right, what's number, that was only number four. What else did I need to say anything about that? So we I mentioned that it's, um, Obviously, Long Tall Sally and Pit Viper. Long Tall Sally is a variety by um, Blaine Horton. And Pit Viper is a variety from Keith Muller that's from a line of H28 and Dwarf Wild Fred. Dwarf Wild Fred was one of my favorites from last year. Really fantastic. So anyway, majestic variety. Can't wait. The, the killer is going to be getting these seeds in and not being able to do it for this year. Unless a miracle happens, it probably will take a few weeks. I've already received tracking for the first one, I think. Um, but I may just try to squeeze something out. I'll have to look at the maturity 
dates and maybe try to squeeze something out. I will tell you that another thing from her site that is in here, which is a micro dwarf, I am planting as soon as it arrives here. What's our next one? Claire Claxon. So I have had a few family members. I've mentioned in the past that I grow extra seeds for family members and friends. Um, the, and they're not always things that I am growing myself, but I will start things like beef steak. Um, this year, we're, we're not actually growing Cherokee purple or black crim, growing a lot of Cherokee purple and black crim crosses, but the actual plants is be our first year not growing Cherokee purple in probably a few decades. Um, but I'm growing those for um, then some San Marzano, um, and then I'm giving away extras of a lot of the seeds I am starting. But my nephew asked for um, an orange variety. And while I'm growing a lot of bicolor orangey things, I wasn't growing a straight orange. But when he asked for that, I knew exactly which one I wanted to grow. Because this is from Secret Seed Cartel, Carrie Claxon. Um, I've mentioned in the past that Heidi Dolan says that Secret Seed Cartel is very... Um, not particular, but they're very intentional about the varieties that they sell. If they don't like it, they don't sell it. And this was under the column of collector's tomatoes. So that's another, if you tell me it's a collector's item, I'm buying it. I'm buying it. So Carrie Claxon um, is a solid orange tomato that I'm growing for my nephew. And I think I might actually grow one for myself too, because I'm curious. Um, what Secret Seed Cartel says about it is it's a beautiful bright yellow heirloom from the family of Carrie Claxon in Raceland, Kentucky. Medium to large size, very low seed count, thick, firm, meaty flesh. This is a yellow tomato lover's dream. I have a heart for Kentucky heirlooms and this one doesn't disappoint. Clean, bright taste common to yellows, tends to keep the green shoulders, which I personally like. Hmm, see a little bit, not much though. Moderate producer, if you like yellow, thick, thick flesh tomatoes, this is the one for you. Makes a good tomato sandwich, hard to find seeds, and also a bonus if you're a collector. I'm a collector. I love the color. It's almost, almost like orangey ochre, isn't it? Like a butterscotch orangey. I like that a lot. Um, not always the biggest fan of thick skin, thick flesh, um, or just plain orange tomatoes for that matter. Rob likes some first tomato sandwiches. I'm like, eh, there's other things I'd want to grow. But I, I may just keep one of these seedlings back for myself. Um, so for Nicholas, I doubt you're watching, but this is for you, my buddy, getting married in the fall. Um, so delicious. I can eat tomatoes all day. I agree. Amanda, isn't there a spot for everyone to share recipes? I'd love to see everyone's recipes for more idea. There is. So if you just put a recipe as a separate post in the group, I can then add it to our recipe group guides. Um, be happy to do that. So yeah, just share it as its own post. Um, I will have to, I have to add my tomato crack post to that guide. I created the guide, but I keep, there haven't been a whole lot of recipes yet, but I will um, starting, well, now I will add to the recipe column. Um, Brianna says, this only sounds like a tomato sandwich to me. Yeah. Yeah. Same. Kind of same. Eileen. Hi, Eileen. I love orange meters. Yeah. Rob really does too. He loved Kellogg's breakfast a couple of years ago. I, I like them. It's certainly not a bad tomato, like some of the antho ones that I, I'm always talking about. Um, they're good. I just, for me, they lack that one, two punch. They also lack the acid that I'm always craving, um, which is part of the reason why I think my nephew wanted um, an orange because they do lack, some, sometimes, not all, sometimes they lack that acid. There, For people that look for low acid tomatoes, that's actually a myth. There are no real low acid tomatoes, but as far as um, the flavor that the oranges, I feel lack that acid. Um, I bet that tomato's super sweet. Yeah, it sounds like it's a good one. Does it say anything about flavor? Makes a great tomato sandwich. That's the only thing about flavor, which is a little bit of a, hmm. Low seed count, thick, firm, meaty flesh, yellow tomato lover's dream. 
have a heart for Kentucky heirlooms. This one doesn't disappoint. Clean, bright taste, common to yellows. All right, clean, bright taste. It does talk about flavor. So that is that is typical of oranges and yellows. So I'm sure um, my nephew will be happy, and we'll see if I can find a spot for it in our garden too. Wolf, and they look like tiny pumpkins. Yeah, they kind of do. They kind of do. Uh, Missy, oh, you've grown this. Really good on sandwiches. This was before I knew how to save seeds. Oh, that's too bad, huh? It is out of stock at Secret Seed Cartel. Um, yeah, see, now I need to grow it out just for, to save the tomato because it's a collector's tomato. Do, don't you cringe for those of you that um, are just learning how to save seeds or maybe you haven't yet, but you're going to, that, oh, gosh, if only I'd saved seeds from that. I've, I've been saving seeds for a long time, but even some of my early, early tomatoes, I wish I did that. Gosh, we're at 92 live viewers right now from all of our platforms. That's awesome. Glad you guys can join me. Hope you're having as much fun as me. If you're just joining us, make sure you type in hashtag tomatoes, not tomatoes, tomato, singular tomato, in the comments. And I'm going to do a live drawing at the end of the episode, and you will get to choose some seeds. All right, let's move on to our next one. This one's on my grow list this year, and I don't know why I have escaped mentioning it until now. This is called Carolina Dusk. It's a cross between Big Chief and a cross of Prudence Purple and Indian Stripe. Look at the color on this. Just look at the interior. I find a lot of things like have a nice purpley outside color, but then the, it doesn't carry through to the inside. So I picked this. Um, I, got seeds for this from um, Bunny Hop Seeds or Heritage Seed Market. And here is what my friend Ellie from Bunny Hop Seeds has to say about it. She says, Carolina Dusk is one of the best tasting and best textured purples I have ever eaten. A real winner, rich and sweet, flesh is meaty and plumpin'. And then she says, if you are not sure what plumpin' means, feel free to watch the movie Madagascar 2. Gloria is the plumpinest. All right. Well, I don't have time to watch it now, but I'll, I'll take her opinion. I'll take her word for it. The original cross of Big Chief and Prudence Purple and Indian Stripe was made by a gardening form friend of mine, Timothy T. in North Carolina. And it, she does a lot with Timothy T., by the way, in um, Heritage Seed Market. In a joint effort with a great group of global growing partners in the forum, more than five years were spent in selecting for excellently flavored five to eight ounce purple salads on a productive, vigorous plant. Grow out participants and Timothy T had larger fruits. I do typically get fruits on the smaller end of the scale due to my very short tomato season. Big lush potato leaves help to protect the fruit from sun scald. And then she says, it's a fine addition to my wow list of the season, highly recommend. I did notice that the, the side or the photo of Carolina Dusk on her site does show a very round um, saladette size, like she said. These photos came from um, Cultivate Your Street from France or Cultive Taru. And what they have to say about it is um, same, cr same cross, Big Chief and Prudence Purple, created by Amateur Gardener, who deserves a name, I believe, Timothy T of North Carolina. Fruits weighing 150 to 250 grams with a purple color and greenish shoulders, very dark flesh, juicy, fragrant, 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 fragrant with excellent flavor. Very robust potato foliage plant, suitable for cultivation in short and or cold seasons. So we'll see if I get smaller or larger fruits. We have a um, nice long season here in Western New Jersey. So maybe we'll get the big ones. Even if we get the saladette, I have nothing against saladette, like my banana noir. Um, I sure would like these bigger ones, though. But hey, if it's got the flavor, bring it on for sure. Okay. So I mentioned that it's been a couple of exciting days for me in the tomato world because I'm learning about these new vendors or new to me vendors and new to me breeders. I already mentioned um, uh, a couple back, the Malachite Elf um, from a member of our site. And then um, just today, I found, uh oh, 
No, tell me I didn't upload upload this slide either. Are you kidding? No. Hang on. Did I not? I can't believe I'm doing this again. Hang on. Let me just check. Rats. All right. Bear with me again. It's worth it. It is worth it. Oh, you know what? I can I can look on her Facebook page, I think. All right. So I found, um, thanks to um, Lena Halberstadt, who I was messaging with this morning. She's otherwise known as Jersey Tomato Chick uh, on Instagram. She's got a very big following. She's a member of our group. And she thanked me this morning for bringing attention to a Ukrainian vendor in um, Graf Samina. My, absolutely my pleasure. And then she said, I assume you know about Natalie Casanelli from also from Ukraine. And I'm like, no, but sometimes, you know, the tomato world, sometimes I'm friends with tomato people, but maybe I don't realize they're a breeder or, you know, just their stuff has escaped me until now. We weren't, Natalie and I were not even friends until today, which I don't know how, because wait until you see her stuff. Let me pull her profile up. She does um, sell over private message, Natalie Casanelli. Let me show you the, I made this beautiful slide and everything. Let me see if I can just search it. I am, like I keep saying, I'm hot messier than usual today. So there's one, there's so many varieties that I'm ordering from her because what a gifted, first of all, she's got other really um, unique Jarsons and Kazulas. But, oh no. Mm. Let's see. Yeah, just do truffle. All right. How am I going to do this? How is this not coming up? I need to be searching her page. All right. Anyway, she's got some outstanding varieties that she's created. Some not stable yet. Um, some are not hers. Look at, look at her photos too. These are not hers. Here's a Kazula. Are you guys seeing all this? Yep. There's a Kazula. So you can look at her personal, look at this Kazula 72. My God. Once I got to her stuff, I was like, whoa, look at Kazula 72, Renegade. All right. I need to narrow this down. Can I? Let me try bronze. Oh, rats. All right. Let me try one more thing. I put together a whole order sheet for her today, and I included links. All right, we seeing this now? No. Let's get this off and show. Wait till you see this. I know the buildups are killer because. All right, here we go. <laughs> this one is a where I think it might be available for sale or it's a work in progress, but I don't care. I, the title of the show is Things I'm Obsessing About This Week. This is called Line Bronze Truffle GWR. Look at this thing. I love the little Ukrainian flag she's got in there. Um, let me see if the other outside picture. Yeah, this is the outside of it. And this is the inside. Now, how has Natalie escaped my knowledge until now? I do not know, but you guys need to check her out. Check out her profile. I'm going to put in the comments um, her Facebook profile. Natalie Casanelli, also from the Ukraine, also does this as her primary source of income, lives in the same town as Elena, apparently. Um, and this is her livelihood. And boy, is she a talented breeder. 
Um, Lisi, I see your comment. I'll put it up in just a second. Okay. In the comments now is her Facebook profile, Natalie Casanelli. Um, Lisa on the list. Absolutely. Facebook user says, these tomatoes you're introducing to us are simply heavenly. I'm so glad you're liking them. Make sure you log in or watch on my YouTube channel because right now you're not logged in. Um, but I'm glad you're enjoying the varieties. Um, okay, there's another conversation going on here that uh, Deb, I love Jersey tomato chick, Lena. Me too. And do you know she lives like 20 minutes from me? We've never met. We should really meet in person. I really like her a lot. Um, she, does, if you're not on her Instagram channel, you want to be. Um, she is in Tomato Lovers Collective and Swap. I think she joined us recently. Um, but she has some beautiful photos and she does these, um, what does she call them? Showdowns, I guess. She'll pair two tomatoes together during the growing season and declare a winner. She has great photos, great write-up. She's really great. So she's the one that told me about Natalie, and I've been thanking her all day for introducing me to her. Let me show you one more thing of her. I can show you a bunch of her things. I mean, they're so incredible. Um, this, what is this one? This one is called Wings of an Angel. Wait, I'm not showing that. Hang on. Remove that. Looks a little similar. Stop screen, present, share screen. Here we go. Wings of an Angel, which I think is an F6 right now. I mean... Can you even? Who is this wonderful, this wonderful breeder from Ukraine? And why has she not entered my life until now? All right, here's here's one more. Okay, hang on, I've got to go through this whole process of removing it and stop screen present. This one is called Painted Piglet, and she has two. Um, versions out. Look at this. See what she says about Painted Piglet. Uh, so I've, this is part of the reason why I'm late, why I was late today. I'm like busy, like doing all these, I'm finding these new breeders and new vendors and it's so exciting. So she says Painted Piglet, I'm showing this, right? Yeah. Painted Piglet. Oh, now I just lost the translation. Hang on. Hot mess, hot mess. Stable, very productive, and the taste, the same as in high saturated. Translation's not, not cutting it a little bit. This year gave one split by color. It's also bombastic in terms of yield and taste. We will stabilize it because my son really liked it. And then let's name it in his honor, Piglet. I love it. I love both versions. That yellow, and I'm not big on yellows, as you guys may know. Look at that. So anyway, check out Natalie Casanelli. Um, hopefully we're not bombarding her with, with um, private messages for orders, but that may be what, what she wants. Um, I did tell her I was going to do this. So <laughs> um, Natalie, if you're watching, thank you for what you do. Um, and I would love to get some business your way in Ukraine also. So um, all right, we've got some conversations going on about F6s. F6 means the generation. So when initial cross is made, that is an F1. Um, that's the first generation. By F6, that means it's it's the sixth generation of grow out. Um, so generally not considered stable at F6, but honestly, I don't care. Um, a lot of times, like with Jarson's, for instance, I've, I know Jarson one is a cross between great white and Kazula 25. I want to grow all the different versions, but you know, uh, certainly breeders often want something stabilized before they give seeds away for it because it can be a hot mess. So, um, you know, like the, um, in graph Samina, 
the crosses that she has. I'm not sure what generations they are, but I really don't care. So F6 is stable, isn't it? Yeah, it's arguable. It's arguable. Some people say F6 is stable. Others say, I think, seven. Um, so we don't know. But anyway, check out Natalie. If Hopefully you got, I think I put her, I'll put it one more time, her Facebook profile in the comments. What a talented breeder she is. So we're getting some nice Ukrainian friends that we can support with our addiction. Okay. Um, all right, I think I've got all, all, everybody's asking about hybrids and all that. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Hopefully I've got the slide up. Just never know. All right, we did, last one we did Carolina Dusk. Um, here's the next one. I recently got seeds for this, not going in the ground this year um, or falling into soil, but it really sounds interesting. I got seeds from Bounty Hunter Seeds, Sean. Um, this one's called Matsu Express, and it is a cross between Brandywine and Bloody Butcher. Have not grown Bloody Butcher. All I know is that the interior looks phenomenal. It looks like a steak, does it not? Like a rare steak. It looks fantastic. So here's what I know about it. Um, from Tomato Fifu says, Brandywine Bloody Butcher. It was developed with the aim of obtaining a variety with good taste qualities and especially early maturity in northern climates such as Alaska. Red fruit of 150 to 300 grams, beefsteak type flattened at the poles and ribbed at the top, juicy beef with excellent flavor, plant with great development, sparse potato foliage, indeterminate growth. Looks really great. Um, the contrast has me. Yes, I agree, Brianna, for sure. Cynthia looks delicious. I, this will be one of the options of seeds I'm giving away to um, five winners um, that I choose at the end. Wow, we're at 100 live viewers. My goodness. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. If it's your first time watching, I'm Lauren. This is Lauren's Tomato Awesome Sauce. I come every Friday at this time. This is only episode three. And I talk about my 10-ish, ish varieties I'm obsessed with on any given week. And it's 10-ish. I really had 10 slides today, but you know, then I go down the rabbit hole of look what else Natalie's bred and look what else at Graf Samana's head. But I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Make sure you type in the comments, hashtag tomato, because I'm going to be giving away seeds to five people. You'll have your choice of seeds. If you are watching from inside the Facebook group, you need to grant StreamYard permission to use your name by going to facebook.com backslash Facebook, click on that blue button. Otherwise my giveaway tool will not pick you up. Best case scenario, just watch on my YouTube channel, which is Mr. And Mrs. Tomato Head. Um, okay, so Matsu Express, what else do we know about it? I guess that's it. Has anybody else grown it? Not growing it this year. I might grow it next year. We'll see. Cindy, love the Matsu Express. Yeah, it looks really nice, right? And brandy wine. it's such a classic for a reason. Oh, Cindy, did you say love the Matsu Express because you've grown it? Tell me. Do tell. Um, oh, no. Didn't mean to click on that one. I think anything with brandy wine equals amazing. I would think so, too, as long as it's not Black Beauty. <laughs> if you haven't caught any of my episodes, I don't like Black Beauty. Or OSU Blue or Dancing with Smurfs or... Yeah, that's it. Pretty much anything with a lot of anthem, not a fan. I think it tastes like soap. Um, oh, Deb. Hi, Deb. I grew Bloody Butcher last year. They were an early producer, tasty and prolific in 7A. Good to know. Yeah, I really love um, the concept of how this one is early or is ready early um, because a lot of times the early ones really lack flavor and color. And this certainly does not. So you can get seeds. I got seeds, like I mentioned, from Bounty Hunter Seeds. Sean is great. Going to be giving away some of his seeds. This is one of them. So Matsu Express. Don't know. Don't know where this one's from. Yeah. All right. So I keep mentioning Graf Samina today. New to me vendor from Ukraine. Um 
Where was I going with this? Oh, I wanted to share this site again. Hang on. Graphsamina.com. Many of you have gone down the rabbit hole already. If you don't want to, don't go to this website. But I'm telling you, this is a great site. One of the best vendors I've found in a while. Um, now, I will give a disclaimer. I have not received any of the seeds yet. Um, and I will be doing an unboxing when my orders come in. But so far, it couldn't have been easier. It, it The site translates to English well. She's got fantastic photos, fantastic write-up, eight parameters she judges each tomato by. I pressed um, order. She emailed me almost right away, depending. I mean, she's in Ukraine, so you don't know the time of day, with the cost. And I was able to pay her on PayPal, and I had a tracking number. So, um, you know, so far, my and she's really nice. If you're in Tomato Lovers Collective and Swap, she had me share a um, heartfelt message from her in the group this morning because she got several orders after I shared in the group yesterday, which makes me really happy because, like I keep saying, this is her livelihood. Um, she's in, you know, Ukraine in the heat of, of battle. Her town's being ripped to shreds, she said. So it's nice to be able to give her business. So besides the Gibson one that I shared earlier that totally blew my mind, she has this micro that I'm really excited about. This is called Chocoladnik or Chocoladnik. It only gets to be about 14 to 15 inches tall. I had never heard of this, but I will tell you, I was just talking to somebody recently. I don't know if it was you, Michael, that I'm really looking for a micro dwarf that has that like Cherokee purple look to it, that chocolate look. Dark stripe, yeah, that's more of a mini dwarf though. That's that's a taller one. I wouldn't really consider that a micro. Um can't really think. Oh, there's Coco, which is an F1. That's a good one. That's a micro dwarf. But these are these are larger fruits on a 14 to 15 inch tall plant. Here's what she has to say about it. And I added this to our micro mini dwarf um, resource sheet. So the Chocolatnik variety meets all of her parameters. Excellent new variety, she says. The growing season is only 100 to 110 days. The variety is very convenient since it's a determinate low growing bush with a height of 35 to 38 centimeters or 14 to 15 inches tall. Um, does not require pinching or staking at all, saving gardeners time and effort while providing an early and abundant harvest of slightly flattened chocolate fruits weighing 70 to 80 grams. Here's what she has to say about the taste. The taste is rich, sweet, and has a fruity aroma when cut, juicy, does not crack, Thin skin, yum, ripens completely, or when it ripens completely, you want more sweet, fruity variety that fully lives up to its name. One of the sweetest mini varieties. Yield is above average. Regular fertilizing is desirable. This variety certainly has good flavor and a compact plant size, making it a suitable choice for home gardening. We recommend it to all people who do not have much space to grow. Whoa, sign me up. Sign me up, <laughs> Amanda, hold up. I'm here for this. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Check it out. Do I have good pronunciation? Thank you. Thank you. I'm trying. Um, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, Rach, just Rach, nice compact bush. No staking is a plus. Yeah, I mean... I've, I've got a thing for micros. Many of you know I'm trying to grow all that I can get my hands on, um, and review them all and determine which ones are good, which ones are not. And this, I need seeds for immediately. This is earlier when I said, chances are all of the seeds I get from her will not make it into soil for this year. This one, because I, I can grow it anytime and it, it'll go outdoors and then it can come back indoors. Me likey says my buddy, Michael, my micro buddy, Michael. I knew you'd like this one, Michael. That's when you said earlier that you had to stop going down the rabbit hole. I'm like, eh, there's a micro in there. You may want for sure. Oh, Luke, you bought this one too. How could you not, right? I mean, look at the fruit size. Look at the color and her, her thoughts on the color and the flavor. It was a no-brainer for me. Um, 
rooted in Texas. Yes, please. Where is this one from? I don't see it on graph. It is. It is in graph. Um, let me see if I can pull it up. It's in, if you go under, well, let's pull it up together. It was one of the first things I found on there, as a matter of fact. Now let's remove. I went to tomatoes and then I went to mini varieties. Oops, no, not that. No, not Aztec. And then I scrolled down and here it is. So go to tomatoes and then mini varieties. And there it is. Chocolatnik early dwarf tomato. I'm excited. I've never known anybody that's got this, although she says it's new. So I don't know if she bred it herself or what the scoop is, but I'm with you, Michael. Me likey too. Um, chocolate, chocoladnik. Yeah. Put chocolate in a name and I'll like it. Um, yeah. If you're, if you're just joining, make sure you type in hashtag tomato. We only have one variety left, so we're getting down to the nitty gritty. So make sure you get in hashtag tomato. Um, nice one says Jerry. Yeah, I agree. This could be a winner. I, if you, um, I don't know if you guys caught my review of Henry Harrington's dwarf cherry or bush cherry a couple of weeks ago. That one is in contention for my favorite micro of all time. That's I'm going to have a show down with Vilma and Candy Berry. It was that good. That's from New Zealand. Um, all right. So what is our last one? This one I've been eyeing for a bit and um decided to take the plunge. Amber Barron. This is another one of Elifirov's varieties, a breeder I'm obsessed with from Kazakhstan. Um, got these from Tomatin Flusterer um, or um, Tomato Whisperer. He's in our group also. He's from Austria. Uh, Thomas, Thomas Seidel is his name. And um, I'm going to be doing an unboxing. He and I just um, did a trade together. I'm going to be doing an unboxing of his varieties. He actually, if you follow me well, you will know that um, my first grow list video, I featured this variety, Carl's Emslin Trauba. Um, the grandson of Carl's Emslin Trauba, of Carl Schneiderger, I think, I think I'm wrong on the slide, it's Schneiderger's. Um, the grandson reached out to Jen or reach out to me thinking it was Jen wanting to offer her seeds for this cherry variety. That's very special. His 103 year old grandfather bred it right after World War II. I passed on the message to Jen and said, I'd love to grow some too, if you'd like me to have some seeds. And he did, he sent seeds. Um, they do take a while to germinate, but I bring this up because Thomas Seidel, his website, um, Tomat and Flusterer, I think I put, yes. Here's, I will put his website in the comments. You, he can do private orders over private message. Um, but right now from the site, he does not ship to the United States, but you can do it over private message via PayPal. Here's the website. He's got some great varieties, including this Carl's Emslin Trauba. So um, it, it was, I think, coming across this variety and getting seeds, finally got seeds to germinate. They take a while. They took about three weeks. Um, and the poor grandson sent Jen and I two different batches of seeds because they do take a while. But sometimes the wild, this is the breeder, Carl Schneidegers, apologies for not having the end or the S at the end. And he's now 103, not 101. So back to the point. Thomas has this in stock. Many breeders or many vendors do, um, but I'm getting mine from him. So Vitaly Alafirov, he's uh, Thomas says on his site, breeding by Alafirov Vitaly from Almaty region in Kazakhstan. The fruits consist almost entirely of pulp. Seed pockets are almost non-existent. I'm surprised I didn't put an inside photo in here. I almost always do that. Oh, I know why because this was the last one and I was in a rush because I was looking at varieties from Natalie and all my other new Ukraine friends. <laughs> um, let's see, the color is predominantly orange with marbled pink spots. If you Google this variety, you will see the inside is outstanding. Uh, taste is wonderfully sweet and fruity. The yield is incredible. 
the whole plant is full of these great beefsteak tomatoes. The ripening period is a good 80 days, but in a sunny location, it can be grown outdoors. Amber Barron was one of our favorites to grow in 2023 and will certainly be grown again. Let me, I, I can't go an episode without showing you the inside of a tomato. Let me just pull up for, on Google. Uh, ooh, turns out Amber Barron's some kind of a cartoon character I wasn't aware of. Looks like some kind of kawaii type thing from Japan, maybe. Tomato. Kind of a girl who's a bunny. Um, do images. Here we go. Here's a vendor on Etsy. Might be one of our vendors. No, I, I've ordered from her before. Green Baron Seeds. Let me show you guys. Because I can't not show you the interior. That's, for me, that's part of the draw. Love the exterior, but the interior is what gets me. All right, this is from Green Terra Seeds. US. Look at that interior. Absolutely beautiful, Amber Barron. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Love the shape also. So that's it, gang. That's my 10. Um, Darla, the inside of Amber Barron's gorgeous. I know, right? Let's go back and take another look. So gorge, yeah. I'm growing a few that the inside, at least the photos anyway, look similar to that. I cite Crystal's one of them. Um, Her Majesty's Grandmother's another one. I think there may be oh, clairvoyant sorcerer similar, I think, although I'm having trouble getting that to germinate, unfortunately. We'll see. Um, Got to see the inside. Me too. Me too. Got to have so beautiful. Agreed. Agreed. So you can check out Thomas, um, his site on tomato, tomatenfluster.com. I put the link in the comments already. So one thing I said during week one is that I was going to have like a special ending segment of the show where I was going to share my most wanted of the week. And last week I completely forgot. So first week it was a variety um, by, can't think of his name, right? Phil Seneca of Good Mind Seeds called um, Prince Charming's Bastard. That was the, the name of it. And I don't know if seeds exist. I have not found them yet. I've got a new one for this week. Seeds are not available yet, though. They won't be available until 2025. Doesn't mean I'm not obsessed with it, though. So I'm going to show it. This is bred by Bruno of um, Cultivate Your Street or Cultive Taru from France. Um, this is called Juju Debut Fruits or um beautiful fruit juju look at this beautiful tomato i if he's got like a sign up sheet for 2025 i want to be at the top of that list um oh hang on darla says the inside on their tomato and fluster look very different from the ones you showed that was what i had seen and was commenting on oh okay perhaps i should look too i want to be well, let me talk about this and we can go back to that if you want. Um, Jamie, I know. Hi, Jamie. Absolutely stunning. I know. The goo ratio. Oh, you know what? I need that as like a t-shirt. The go the goo ratio. I love that so much. Cynthia, I'm so bad for my your wish list. I know. I know. Sorry. Sorry, not sorry. I came across this. Um, my friend Luke has been kind enough to um get me some. They, they don't ship to the United States, Cultive Taru or Cultivate Your Street, but he uh, has been kind enough to help me get some of the varieties. But this one, like I said, here's what, what Bruno, um, the vendor, has to say. He said it was baptized in September 2023 at the Tomato Festival in the Haverskirk involving Tyen D. Bruno Huiga, apologize for the pronunciation there, named it in honor of his dad, Julien, who's a well-known gardener who passed on his passion, particularly that of tomatoes, and whose nickname was Juju of Beautiful Fruits. It's F5 right now in 2023. It will not be released until 2025 at the earliest. Purple fruits with metallic reflections. The interior is magnificent, a mixture of green and pink blush, and it will be an exclusive just to Cultive Taru. 
Gaga for the goo. Gaga for the goo. <laughs> Licia, I'll tell Jessica. Jessica is Licia's daughter who created our awesome sauce. Um, Save the Tomatoes merch, if you haven't checked it out. Oh, Lordy, jump into my basket, Juju. I know, if only, if only. Can we grow out generations sooner, Bruno? Can we? <laughs> anyway, don't mean to um, put unneeded stress on you, but Bruno, if you're watching this or if you have a friend who's watching it, I'm very excited for you to release this. It sounds great. I love that you're naming it after your dad. I love the sentiment behind the name. But I just love this color, my friend. I just love the color. It's got the shine. Yes, Rach, just Rach. I agree. I agree. Um, did I see my buddy Jen Joy in here at some point? I feel like I saw her pop in, but I haven't seen anything. Did somebody see see a, get a Jen sighting? I can't go through all of them. Too many comments. Um, yeah, we had like 102 members viewing at one point. We're still at 94. Let me go to Tomatin Flusterer so we can look at the inside. Inside Tomatin, did it look the same at all, Darla? Um, let me show you the site while I'm navigating while we're here. So it translates to the Tomato Whisperer, Der Tomatin Flusterer. Here's the site. He's got a really nice site, really nice site. I love um, his photos. He's got you know, a great graphic going on there with all the pertinent information. So let's do Amber. Here we go. Amber Barron. Ah, wow. It really is different, isn't it? Shape and everything, Amber Barron. Well, this is the one I'm getting. Um, this is the one I wanted. I'm not sure, maybe that Etsy, I don't know that Etsy vendor, it's not one of our tried and true ones. So perhaps they have a different one, but this is the this is definitely the one, I was confused by the shape on the other one, to be honest with you. Um, so this is this is what I'm getting from Tomatin Flusterer, um, Thomas Seidel. So if you haven't checked out his site, let me put the website in the comments for you too. I know I'm, I'm terrible for everybody's pocketbooks. Like I said, um, right now, he did, through the site, he does not ship to the United States. I'm not sure about other places in the world. He's out of Austria, um, but he can do private orders via private messenger. So you can check him out. His name is Thomas. I think I'm getting this, pronun this pronunciation right. Thomas Seidel. Okay. Terry says, this one looks better. I'm not a heart-shaped fan. Weird, they're so different. Yeah, Teresa, I agree. It, if it was one of our, our vets, Etsy vendors that I know well, um, I would think twice about it. I'm thinking perhaps that, you know, I feel like I, I know the ones that have, um, well, I shouldn't say anything. I don't know that vendor. I'll just say it. So I would I definitely trust Thomas and his um, view. Perhaps there was a seed mix up with the other one. Um, okay, let's give away some seeds. So here's what I've got today. I'm going to give you guys, I'm going to draw five names and I've got a bunch of options, which I will remind you of if you are to win. If you are to be one of the winners, please private message me on Facebook. That's the easiest. If you're not on Facebook, you can email me and I'll put my email address. Actually, I'm going to put it as a banner. Um, that's easier. Here's my email address. Nice short one. Learning at me.com. So you can email me if you're a winner. Um, and seeds won't go out immediately. I'm backed up. I still have others to go unless you really want something for this year. And then you can message me and I can move you up. So Heirloom Seed House has sent all these seeds to give away. I'm not going to offer all of these as a prize, but let's see tonight. I'll offer Tasty Evergreen. Um, he's known for Italian seeds, so Castelluto Pesarese. Um, Malor Quinn, which is a long keeper. And I'll choose one more from him. Sweet Cream. So we'll do those from him. And then Bounty Hunter Seeds, Sean also gave me seeds to give away. 
gave us, I should say, not just me, the entire group. Um, what did I say? Matsu Express was one of them that read. Let me go back to that and remind you. The one that's good in with a um, short ripening period, Matsu Express. Let's see what else he's got. Um, Bear Creek. Let me get this off. Hang on. No, sorry, not Bear Creek. That was one of not one of the. That's one of my personal ones. Where's the ones he donated? Matsu Express is one. A uh, gigant Kubi. Don't know if you can see that. It's not. Stop focusing on me. Focus on this. All right, gigant Kubi. Oh, I mixed all these up with my personal ones that are only have five seeds in it because we did a trade. Um, oh, here's another one. Oh, we do. We do have Bear Creek. My apologies. I thought so. Bear Creek, and we'll do one more. Black Amber. Do some blacks from him today. Black Amber. Okay. So Matsu Express, Black Amber, Bear Creek, Gigant Kubi, Sweet Cream, Malorquin, Castellucho Pesarese, and Tasty Evergreen. And as always, I also offer my banana noir seeds um, and can do, yeah, we'll stop it there. Stop it there. Keep it simple. All right. So let's get the giveaway tool up. We've got 112 people that entered. This is incredible. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is amazing. Thank you for joining me. One of these days I'll try to scale down the time of this, but that day is not today, obviously. All right, so I'm going to draw five names, and you need to con contact me, please. I can't contact you, but you contact me, and we'll work it out. First one. Is Cheryl Wilson. Congrats, Cheryl. My friend Cheryl. Okay. My internet held out pretty well today, huh? Usually these daytime ones, for some reason, it just flakes out on me. Nighttime's fine. Okay, next one. You may still have time to put in hashtag tomato. We're not done drawing yet. It probably will still accept if you haven't done it yet. Keegan Hopwood. Congratulations, Keegan. This is what I was talking about, that if if you are watching from the Facebook group and you're not logged in, this giveaway tool can't pick up your name. So, um, so if you're watching, you don't see your name being listed and you're watching from Facebook, that's probably why. All right. Third one. I have so much fun with this, you guys. I, I'm so happy to see that you enjoy it with me. Um, Riverdale Gardens. Well, you're a big winner lately, Riverdale Gardens. I owe you something else, I believe. Have to check into that. Congratulations. Um, anyway, these Thursdays are a lot of fun. They help take stress off of all the struggles in life, don't they? Talking about tomatoes. Um, Tanya Moore. Congratulations, Tanya. I didn't mean that to sound. I was talking about struggles in life, and then I drew your name. Sorry, Tanya. Yay, Tanya. Um, I got a shirt yesterday, which I posted in the group. It says, I wonder if, something like, I often wonder if tomatoes think about me as much as I think about them or something like that. It's really cute. have to wear that maybe next week. All right, and our last one, number five. Gosh, I got to cook dinner. I got some posts to do. South Louisiana. Congratulations, South Louisiana. Sometimes um, I often don't know, like if you're a member of the group, I don't know you from your YouTube handle. 
So if you could just let me know, that would be great. So anyway, thank you guys for a watch. Now we're at 105 viewers. If you caught, if you missed any of this and you want to get down, down, down the rabbit hole of tomatoes, this is being recorded. So you can catch the recording. Um, if you could su please subscribe to my YouTube channel, if you don't already, that would help me out a lot. Um, it is, what is my YouTube channel? <laughs> it's Mr. And Mrs. Tomato Head. Um, I also have an Instagram, which I don't do very often. I'm trying to get better. I just don't have enough hours in the day, Mr. And Mrs. Tomato Head. Um, and please join our group if you're not a member. We would love to have you. Tomato Lovers Collective and Swap. I run it with Jen Joy and Kina Tonarud, and we have a great time. And hey, I'll see you next week. We'll see what other 10, who knows what's going to happen between now and next week. I mean, this has been a big week for me learning about breeders and vendors from Ukraine. Um, I'm excited. You never know what's going to come next week. So we'll see what 10 I'm ish I'm obsessed with next week. And until next time, gang, have a great day. Peace and love. Get your gratitude on and go grow tomatoes. Bye.